Hey, what is up guys? Alexa Rivera here from Tech Inspected and today we're unboxing some very interesting budget smartphones from a brand called Itel and you, maybe you've heard of them, maybe you haven't, but they offer some very good budget smartphones and today we're unboxing a couple of them. One is the Itel A56 and there is also the A56 Pro. Now, basically these two phones are basically the same except for RAM and storage, one has 116 and 232 uh, because they're running on Android Pie, Android 9 Go variant. So they're a lightweight Android system and that makes them more affordable than a lot of smartphones today. This is only 2,899 pesos and 3,199 pesos. So very, very affordable. They're also very closely priced. About $60 on this guy, $65 US dollars on this guy. Uh, some very interesting features here. Itel claims they're both IPS display, six inches with a fingerprint scanner, face unlock and all that. So also 4,000 milliamp hour battery on both of these. So kind of promising smartphones for just the $60, 3,000 peso price point on both of these. I for sure am gonna probably suggest people go for the pro version but if you're really on a budget get the a56 all right so that's all the things you need to know before we unbox them and so we are going to unbox them in just a bit but before we do that please hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet and click on the notification bell to get notified on our next upload and without further ado let's get on with unboxing these <laughs> All right, guys, so here are the contents of the box of the A56 and A56 Pro. They're very similar, actually. The only thing different is the stickers and the manual here. So A56 has the unit, headphones, charging cable, micro USB, uh, five amp charger, uh, ITEL warranty policy, quick start guide, and a nice solid case with a cool texture on it. A56 Pro has the unit, the case, same texture, uh, 56 Pro manual, warranty policy, 5 amp charger, micro USB cable, and headphones. So pretty much the same package except for the phones and the warranty, I mean the quick guide or quick, quick start guides. All right, guys, so let's peel off the plastics on both of these devices. This is the A56. That's actually looking kind of nice. Let's turn it on. There we go. Boots are pretty quick too. And to peel off the A56 Pro. Very identical as you can see. Does have a pre-installed screen protector already. And uh, we'll put that over there. Similar designs on the back. It says ITEL. It says ITEL designed by ITEL. We got a fingerprint scanner and uh, HD logo right there with a LED flash, two cameras on the back. And in front we have a speaker grill. What is that, a uh, LED flash in front? Screen until you hear a beep to enable accessibility mode. I think that's an LED flash in front. And then nothing on the chin. Power button is in the middle of the right side volume on the right as well let's check out the bottom here we have micro usb port and pinhole microphone up top we have a headphone jack very nice and on the left there's nothing so very simple designs here and i don't really remember which one is the pro and which one is the not pro so we'll find that out I'm going to have to set this, these guys up and install some apps and then continue our unboxing and first impressions. Whew. Okay, guys, we are back. And uh, actually, a day has passed since we unboxed these from their uh, boxes. And we have installed our apps and uh, removed some of the bloatware and uh, tested these guys out. So I do have some very good opinions about the A56 on my left and the A56 Pro. But before we get to that, let's take a look at the physical attributes of both of these devices. 
And you can see that they are very identical looking and they have a black matte back plastic finish but it looks pretty nice and it feels pretty solid in the hand in fact let's just look at the a56 right here you can see that there's no like uh you know soft plastic here there's a lot of you know it feels really nice and you can actually mistake this for metal back you can see that there's a fingerprint scanner two cameras led flash uh, that is the probably the 8 megapixel and then a VGA secondary camera. In front we do have a uh, front-facing 5 megapixel camera and surprisingly a front-facing flash which we haven't seen in a while. Uh, in front we do have a 6 inch display. Uh, I can't tell if it's IPS or TFT but it is actually a pretty good display. There is a little bit of color shifting but not a lot and the viewing angles are pretty good so I give this uh, I'd say it a 4 out of 5 in terms of uh, display quality it is not an HD screen mind you for this price point I guess you can't expect that this is a 960 by 480 display a 6 inch display and there's no notches or anything uh, although it does have a little bit of a uh, round out cut out over there on the corners which makes it nice and uh, futuristic or modern looking so as I said Mish, before matte back in the back ITIL logo the speaker is on the back so you can muffle it by putting it on a table now surprisingly this thing has a removable back welcome to old schoolness you surprise surprised maybe because this one was feeling pretty solid so yes both of them have removable backs and as you can see it is a triple slot back but no removable battery uh, which is sort of expected but also I guess kind of an interesting choice for this price point makes it feel solid and has triple slots without needing the you know sim removal tool so that's kind of a cool thing battery life on these guys are both 4000 milliamps and that gives it a little bit of heft and I guess the metal plate on the back where you see inside is actually making it a little bit solid so it feels really nice in the hand and a little bit weighty compared to other devices that I own. So let's take a look at the A56 right here. You can see that it is running on a relatively stock except for no app drawer version of Android 9 Pi Go. And I do like it because it is relatively smooth even with just one gig of RAM this thing is pretty smooth feeling uh, i gotta admit you know sending texts or whatever this is going to be a pretty good uh device and uh it even has the uh, youtube go versions and whatnot so i guess this will work a lot for people who just need the messaging the youtube light the for the youtube go and facebook light and even have spotify in there uh, it does have fm radio if you need it also so there's a pretty good features for a one gig ram device and you can see that the user interface is running quite smoothly all right so as far as antutu score goes as you can see you can't expect much the a56 gets 39.528 the a56 pro gets 42.672 that's mainly because this has two gigs of ram so it's a little bit better when it comes to holding stuff in memory uh, so yeah those are the antutu scores you can't expect much this is running on a spreadtrum SC7731E processor, yes, exactly, that rolls off the tongue quite nicely, but it's a relatively, like I said, entry-level processor, you can't expect much from it, but we'll get to the gaming in a bit. All right, so as you would expect from a budget smartphone, it does have bloatware, so expect a little bit of bloatware and a little bit of disabling, a little bit of uninstalling. You can see a little bit of the, uh, the taste of the bloatware right here as I took some screenshots of the bloatware. Here is what you would see in the applications when you boot this guy up. It does have uh, Boomplay, Palm Store, AHA Games, PHX Browser, Cortex Gaming, Tiles Hop, uh, and that's pretty much it for the blower. So it's not bad. I do, did have to disable some of the applications and some of them were built into the ROM. So they were not uninstallable. But uh, in terms of blower, I'd say give this a, a B plus. Not a lot of blower, just, you know, doesn't just have a few apps. All right, so both of these devices have fingerprint scanners and they're not the best, but they're 
decent, you do have to put your finger in there a little bit more, you know, with a little bit more pressure than usual. And you have to wait maybe one or two seconds before it activates. So uh, let's try them out right now. That one activated, this one did not. So I guess I pressed the, the finger a little bit differently there. So yeah, it does take a little bit of trial and error. It doesn't always do it perfectly, but eventually I'm sure if you can program the fingers a little bit better, you can get that right. It also has face unlock, so we'll trust that right now. There you go, not bad for face unlock. Um, so yeah, I give that a pass. All right, so we're getting to the point where I do have to tell you the differences, what you should expect from the A56 and the A56 Pro. Now, I I, like I mentioned, they do look very identical, but they do not support the same amount of apps or the cal caliber of apps. Uh, theoretically, you still can use them in the same ways, but the A56 Pro supports more apps because it has two gigs of RAM. So if you open the Google folder here, as I rearrange them so you can see, it does have uh, YouTube Go on the non-Pro variant, but you get the full version of YouTube on the Pro variant, Maps Go versus Maps, and such and such. It doesn't have Google Drive, Play Movies and TV, and YouTube Music on this guy. I don't know if it's not supported or it's not pre-installed, but there you go. In terms of uh, other apps, I think they opted for the Facebook Lite here. I don't know if you can install full Facebook, but I do suggest using the Lite variant on the non-pro variant because it only has one gig of RAM. This, these three came pre-installed. I don't know if you can uninstall them. I think you can, but you know, you probably have them installed anyway. Now, as far as games is concerned, I managed to be able to run Mobile Legends and Subway Surfer on the non-pro variant. But on the Pro variant, I, I was able to install uh, Shadowrun Legends, PUBG Mobile, and Ragnarok Mobile. Yes, indeed, you cannot run PUBG Mobile on this. It does have an error message on the non-Pro variant. So if you're looking to play some games, you do want to get the Pro variant. If you want more Google uh, services that are more uh, the, the full variant, you should also get the Pro version of the A56. Now, this is not bad at all if you can play Mobile Legends and Subway Surf. And like I said, this is not a flagship processor. You can't expect a very high performance. And in games, there you know, it takes a little bit of time to load um, and you might get bored of waiting for the load times. Subway Surfer loads pretty quick though. And I'm surprised Mobile Legends actually runs on the one gig of RAM. But there you go. I will show you the gaming capabilities in a bit, but there is the differences between one gig of RAM and two gigs of RAM. All right, so a couple of last uh, little info before we go into the gaming bits. Both of these devices have only two touch points, so no like 10 point touch touch screens, but two touch points is perfectly fine. I think the accuracy is decent. Uh, in terms of sensor box, we don't have a lot of sensors, no gyroscope here, so don't expect any gyroscope based games. And here's a bit of speed test between the two, which one loads faster. You can see it has a proximity sensor, surprisingly, and sound sensor, oh well, that's pretty standard, and accelerometer, no gyroscope, no orientation, no light sensor, and stuff like that. So I guess, you know, as you would expect from a budget phone. I'm still surprised how fast this thing sort of swipes around even in one with one gig of RAM. All right, so let's go ahead and play a game. All right, so with the A56, let's try and load Subway Surfer. I'm surprised how fast this loads, I guess, but you know, it's not instant. Um, so let's show you how, you know, it takes a while. Expect more of this uh, in bigger, beefier games, even with the A56 Pro. And I uh, even tried uh, Ragnarok Mobile on this and it started to load and then it crashed before it got to the game. However, on the A56 Pro, it did, did actually load. Let's lower the volume here. A little bit laggy on the buttons because it's running um, the game, taking up a little bit of a processor here. You know, I wouldn't call this not 30 FPS. I think it's pretty smooth. So, I gotta give this a pass. Decent for Subway Surfers, obviously it's not the most demanding game in the world, but, you know, with one gig of RAM you can still play some 
kind of interesting games. It's a good time waster if you're down waiting for the bus or something, even though it is quarantine times. So that is Subway Surfer. Okay guys, so we are playing the uh, tutorial mode of Mobile Legends. Why? Because every time you install Mobile Legends on your new phone, you have to go through the tutorial, so we can't really play a f an actual, actual game. But you can see that Mobile Legends is alright. Uh, obviously, this is not an action-packed scene of Mobile Legends, but surprisingly, this may be the best uh, exp uh, you would expect from something with such basic processors. Uh, ugh, I hate this tutorial, man. I have to go through this every single time I install it into a new phone. Um, it's relatively smooth. I think it's almost smooth 30 FPS, so, you know, I, given the expectations I had, I think this is quite good. I don't expect it to be perfect 30 FPS when in actual game, uh, game, t gameplay in a big fight. So, you know, surprised that it still runs quite nicely here on the tutorial. So, um, use your, uh, discretion when you think, uh, if it can handle the team fights or gameplay that you could expect. This is the one gig variant, by the way, the A56. So it's, I got, I gotta admit, it's pretty good. Um, that's relatively enjoyable for the tutorial. It didn't lag so much. So there you go for the one gig A56 variant. Let's play on the A56 Pro next. All right, guys. So can you imagine us playing PUBG Mobile on this guy? <laughs> we are playing PUBG Mobile, and it's really choppy. So. I'm guessing 10 frames per second, maybe, maybe. Uh, it does get better once you get into, you know, not crowded areas and maybe not flying through the air. It's a little sticky, I have to admit. The controls are a little sticky, maybe because of the touch response. Got him. The little framey there. Uh, yeah, so maybe I'll play another minute. Where is this guy? Oh, there he is. A little sticky, a little sticky. Man, I didn't do anything that game, that time. All right, so there you go. Uh, I wouldn't, it's technically playable, but I wouldn't call it enjoyable. Um, this is pretty much suffering. <laughs> this is pretty suffering levels of gameplay here. Um, he's got some guns over here. So anyway, I'm going to quit out. Um, so there is PUBG Mobile on the A56 Pro, guys. Okay, guys. So now we are using the A56 Pro playing uh, Ragnarok Mobile. Now, the A56 cannot handle... The, if it, the Ragnarok mobile, it starts to crash once it loads the map. So the A56 Pro though, with two gigs of RAM, is handling it okay. It's not the best, but you know, if you're just here to uh, clumsily move around and kill some pourings and uh, lunatics, then you're okay. Um, definitely not gonna use this for uh, War of Imperium or anything. But hey, if you're in a bind, you just want to play something, this is not the worst thing in the world. Um, I don't even know what kind of skills do I have. There you go, Holy Light. <laughs> That's not bad. So there you go, Ragnarok Mobile on the A56 Pro. All right, so let's take a look at the cameras on both of these guys. Oh, wrong button. Uh, both of these guys have 8 megapixels in the back with a VGA secondary sensor for depth and a front-facing 5 megapixel camera with surprisingly a LED flash so you can actually sort of turn on the LED flash over here like so which is kind of crazy I haven't seen one of those in a while so yeah kind of nice functionality there the image quality is not bad i have to admit i i gotta give it credit the eight megapixel photos are okay 
Uh, but the selfie photos and videos, I think, are better than I would expect, above average. So a couple of photos are whizzing by your face right now. So take a look at them and the videos that I've taken. All right, guys, so I think that's about it for our unboxing and first impressions of, I can't even tell which one is which, the A56 and the A56 Pro. I'll hold, hold one up. Uh, they're surprisingly decent value for money. I do like that it comes with complete accessories. The build quality is pretty good. The front-facing LED flash is good. The cameras are not bad. They're above average, I have to admit. For an average of 3,000 pesos, I think these are pretty good devices if you're not interested in playing games you could go for the a56 if you're playing you know mobile legends and pubg mobile you go for the a56 pro which is actually surprisingly playable in a you know literal sense uh it depends on you if that you think it's enjoyable or not but maybe if you're not a gamer if you don't game a lot you're in a budget a56 a56 pro comes with all of the accessories a large battery large display decent cameras i guess you can't really complain so the a56 and a56 pro is available now check it out at lazada and before we end our uh, video please i do hope you could subscribe and click on the bell icon to get notified on our uploads and i gotta thank you for watching and see you guys next time bye